Hello, um, is this loud enough? Can you hear me at the back at all? Yeah. Is it good? Cool. So, um, yeah, this isn't a business slash beginner um, session, so I'm, but in this session, as it says there, I'd like it if you could go away knowing how you and your organization could actually make money from selling business applications. Um, as a rough idea, can I get a show of hands? I'm, I'm looking for people who are more who are more interested in the development side of things, like exactly how CRM stuff are built and are decoupled all the module and how those fit together. Or how many people here are like more interested from a sort of business angle of how you might be able to uh, do new things for clients, etc. Uh, who's more the developer side here? Cool. Okay. And who's more the sort of businessy side here? Right. So we got about half and half. So we're going to have a boff. Um, during the coffee break and possibly longer um, after the sort of these two sessions, so in the, yeah, in this coffee break coming soon, and our, the developers are the, these two guys here, so we can also go into more detail if anyone is interested after this into the, the technical side of how what we've done, how we've built things, etc. So why do you bother coming here? Well, what we want to do is show you how you can make money off the back of the work we've already done, and why we want to give it to you. I think um, there's like lots of debates about free software versus open source, and obviously in the open source community, there's, there's lots of ways in which uh, um, people pooling together their resources, put things in some common code that we all share, uh, makes money. But I think in CRM, and I'm hoping I'll show you throughout this talk, there's a, I think, relatively unique opportunity that is different to other ways that the Drupal community has seen collaboration across multiple clients because of how CRM works, and how business application works, and how a lot of clients work. So I want to talk a lot about um, how we think, and why we think there's, our, there's fantastic opportunities here to do more for a lot of the clients that you currently work with, and find clients that you may not have even thought about working with, and then why we would want to give away the work that we've done, and why we would want to collaborate with other organizations doing that. Um, and so I will go into some detail about why is it specifically that if we have a base package, if we have a base CRM package that is really good, that is really easy to install, that provides a lot of the functionality that people who are throwing out tenders will want a checkbox list of can it do this and this and this. If the base package works, if it's easy to use, if, it's, if it looks good, there are lots and lots of ways in which we can get ins into clients, but our different organizations and different clients will have different problems that we'll solve that will really be the place where we make money. So, as I said, there's solving extra specific client problems, there's focusing on different niches, which I'll talk about, and then why business applications are cool and make money. The second bit is I want to try and sell to you the idea that all business applications need an effective solution to contacts management at its core. Um, we use the term CRM. CRM is not really the right term. I haven't really figured out what's better, but it's not really a CRM system that matters. It's not really selling that that matters. It's business applications that solve real business problems, but it has to have effective context management in its core. So, we will show you, we'll talk a bit about what we've done with Drupal, and why I think Drupal is in a unique place for the basis of a package that can compete with a lot of proprietary solutions out there. Um, and finally, I want to do some kind of call to arms to join with us. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're planning for both the year, ideally the next month, and ways in which I think we could get um, quite a lot of different collaboration points. So, um, why, do you think, why do I think we can make money? Well, we already have. I mean, we're quite a small group of people. Uh, there's just five of us in, in Freely Give. Um, and we've made about 600k's worth of business just based on this open CRM in the past three years. Um, and there's a couple of logos there. And in the same way, a lot of these clients, um, some of them, uh, as Steve would introduce us to, but a lot of them, they started off talking to us about they just need a website. And then we found that they have some horrible monolithic CRM system that they might need loads of integration points. And the more we talked to them about it, the more we found that actually the real value in the thing that will really help them is improving this. And not improving it through better integration points, but by scrapping it entirely and building it entirely in Drupal. Um, if there's any questions as I go along, feel free to put your hands up. And I have been told I speak far too quickly, and so someone's going to wave at me if I'm rushing ahead. 
So why would we give it to you? Well, um, what we have found is um, CRM systems are things that people are willing to spend a lot of money on. A website markets what you do, but the business applications are the fundamental thing that your organization does. There will be, let's say you're an organization, let's say it's a charity, there's a lot of times, and as a charity, the main way that you make money is by selling memberships. So your membership management system is very heavily fundamental to everything that you do. If you're an events company, selling tickets to events is fundamental. Um, a lot of the time, business applications help communication between people in the organization. And so the direct business processes that um, impact everything that happens, if you can make those more efficient, if you can save people's time, you have a very direct benefit on people's income. If, if your system costs 200 grand, but you can show that it will save you 500 grand in the first year, then the conversation is just an easy one of, you might as well do it, it's obvious. And we've had that where a lot of our business management, um, our, our CRM system-like projects, the ability for our client to sell it to, let's say, their trustees or their board, it becomes a lot easier because they can show the direct cost savings they're going to get just from all of this stuff. But CRM stuff is terrifying, it's really scary, because loads and loads of clients have been burned. Because it's so core, because it's so expensive, because these things tend to take a long time to build, what tends to happen is they have a terrible system they hate, they come along and get a new system, and the new system is better in the, those specific ways that they complained about before, but it introduces loads of new inefficiencies and problems. And then these people are stuck with this horrible system for two or three years. So a lot of people are very scared of CRM. If we have a base package that is just simple, easy to use, works and ticks all the boxes, that costs in the area of, let's say, a grand to set up, then it becomes a lot easier for a client to say, ah, oh, sure, let's just, let's just go for it and then we'll see what happens. And so this is one of the main things about um, why collaborating becomes very, very key. Because the more people we can get into this base package, the more development we can get, the more case studies we can get, the more uh, UI enhancements, the documentation, the videos, etc., that make the base package better, um, the more people will just kind of go, yeah, fine, let's just try it out and see what happens. Um, but, um, and anyway, yes, and we'll move on to the but later. The other thing is, um, a better base package allows us to reach more customers and do bigger projects. There's just lots of times where there will be certain markets and certain industries that, let's say, they need a much better way of handling activities than our current system of, uh, supplies. And if that box isn't ticked when we first go in to talk to them, we can't get it. Um, there's lots of places where, unless we have all the case studies, there will be clients of a certain size that will be a bit scared to go for the small little open source thing and they'll run to the Microsoft Dynamics and Salesforce that they're more familiar with. And finally, and the thing that I'm most keen on but is a little bit more complicated to understand what it is I'm even trying to say, but I think there's opportunity for us to collaborate on business ideas and business applications and business models of how various different organizations can make money from all of this. I'm hoping that when I show you all the different niches and different industries I think that this could go into, this will become clearer uh, about why we can collaborate and why we would even want to. So why we can work together on the base packages but still make money individually. Uh, and that's because the value isn't in the base package at all. Like, even though, um, well, I think we've, I th as I think it's said in the uh, description, we've probably invested about 350k's worth of income into just improving the base package. And so whilst lots of money has gone into it, lots of time, um, people are usually very willing to spend money on that because they expect all of these things from a CRM system. So although it has been difficult and been complicated, there's already so many CRM systems out of the box that do it that if we have the most amazing base package in the world, if we have the perfect base package, it still is not going to necessarily compete with Salesforce because they've just got such a name and such a massive thing behind them that it's not, it's, it's not the base package that people will care about. The value is in, I think, focusing on a niche where you truly understand the business. And we have found that, that um, to make a website for a client, if you're just doing a front-end website, you do have to know them quite well because you're going to be involved in marketing them. Um, but if you want to get into the business, um, if you want to get into business process management or CRM or get into the core of what they do, you have to intimately know their world to some degree better than them. And we have found that with quite a few of our clients, we have got our whole head and everything heavily immersed. Sometimes members of our 
organisation have actually become sort of half employees because we had to get involved in hiring, firing, etc., etc. Because when you understand your niche, when you understand this industry, for example, we worked with churches for a while. Um, we've been now working with some rail operating companies. We've been working with a couple of charities that work with prisons. And when we know those companies, we can um, build things that work better, we can suggest things that really will improve what they, the core of what they do, and the synergies and the, com the communication between us becomes a lot quicker. So focusing on your niche, I think, is where the money is, is where your value is, is why someone will pay you a lot. Simply providing them yet another CRM system that's off the shelf, that's not as cool. Um, and then there's expensive, important, um, valuable customizations that solve unique business problems for a particular client. Uh, and, and this is something I want to give a couple of examples, and these examples will be very niche, but that's the point, is that um, there are a lot of times when you've got a base package, and it will provide 95% of what an organization needs, but there will be this tiny little bit, this 5% remaining, that is the really, really important stuff to them, that no other system will do, because it's so weird, so specific to them, that no one would ever think to build it. But if you don't get this bit right, then the 95% of the work you've done to do everything else is basically a complete waste of time because this tiny bit takes up so much time they might as well go back to pen and paper. Um, and I think maybe that's an exaggeration, but it's not completely an exaggeration. Um, we had one client which um, they do these large uh, summer conferences. And so if you can imagine you've got 20,000 people on a field, we need somewhere for them to camp. And what they tried to do is to encourage a sort of uh, community vibe to it. They would get people who roughly lived together in the same uh, location to um, camp next to each other. So they call it village allocation. They divide the campsite into villages, and they allocate different people to those different um, villages. So we need, they needed a system that allowed them to do that. But then there's a couple of more complications. For example, what if some of these uh, has um, accessibility issues? Let's say they're in a wheelchair or they need access to power. Well, those people have to go into one camp. What if somebody is volunteering in a particular area and they're going to have to go back and forth there? Well, they have to go into another camp. So it starts getting more and more complicated of how you push where people go. And then also sometimes people will have lots of really weird requests, like a really important person says, I have to be there because I've been there the last 10 years. And then finally, you have to tell everyone where they're going to go, uh, where they're going to camp, and it has to be easy for them to get, and that's where the front-end integration comes in. And this process for this client, they had um, two people who worked on it uh, to do this thing, and it would take them between two and three months, because the system that had been built for them was so, so horrendous. The UI was so terrible. The whole thing was built entirely um, from the ground up. It was rushed. It was tagged on to the end of a really big fixed-rate project where everyone was angry at each other and everyone was shouting at each other. And so you would have this horrible process where somebody had to sit there, usually watching TV, just clicking over and over again, and it would take two or three months. And then we built something in Drupal and did some cool drag and droppy like things, and we reduced this thing to about two weeks. And the amount of like the, the amount that, that changed a lot of people's life of this thing they had to do every single year that was horrible and made their life a lot easier was very tangible. But you would never get an off-the-shelf solution that would do this. Um, I'm going to talk a bit later about why Drupal allows us to do those kind of things so much faster. The other issue that we had was um, a client had many different um, databases all spread across the organization. Again, this is something that I think a lot of you might uh, be familiar with. And one of the things they had was an online directory of all the charities they work with so that other people in that same sector could go to their website and find people. Um, this charity worked with young offenders, uh, sorry, with all kinds of offenders. And so they might want to do something like uh, a charity that specializes in rehousing re re uh, ex-offenders who have alcohol problems. And so they had this database where they could filter and search all those things. But the database was separate to their CRM system, which was separate to their user management, membership management system. And so by building it all in Drupal, what we could do is not only bring all those things together, but because it was all integrated with the front end and the front end CRM thing and you, uh, uh, Drupal authentication, we built it so that the charities themselves, if they had the correct permissions, because our CRM system, we knew the relationships that most individuals had to an organization. So we knew if they would be someone, when someone logged in, that they probably had the rights to edit that particular organization. We made it something like more like a Wikipedia for prison management, uh, prison organizations, where it wasn't quite anonymous, but people could log in themselves and edit it. And so this very irritating one to two hour long task every morning that this organization had to do of taking emails of, please can you change my phone number or my address, that just vanished. And then finally we had 
a system which um, was handling bookings, but they uh, had a really, their accounting stuff was just done so badly. Uh, one of the things that happens is in accounting, in the world of accounting, you want to do everything with double entry bookkeeping, you want credits and debits. Whereas in the world of payments, you tend to just do payments. Um, but it's not always the case that our system or our commerce systems that store those payments will exactly separate everything in a way that the accounting people want. And this system hadn't been done like that. So what that meant is this organization that was taking um, tens of thousands of bookings and millions um, um, in cash, they had to, um, in order to get into their CRM, into their accounting system, they had to print off a paper version of all the transactions, and somebody had to physically type in every single one of those, those double entry bookkeepings. And it was just, it's just annoying. So if you come along and you make those things, those things that are specific to them, that final example is a bit more generic, but those things that are specific to them, easy, people will pay a lot because it will save them a lot. And when you charge them a lot, they'll feel it like it's valuable because it will make a huge difference to what they do. They like that stuff. And that's where the value is. It's not in the base package. It's not in just doing CRM. It's not even just in having a nice UI. It's about looking at what your particular client needs, about what they do, looking at the specific things that they find irritating day to day, and then changing those things. And the thing is, having a single... We, we used to use the party module, so we could have made a company called The Party People and tried to make us the people that do CRM in Drupal or the people that do CRM in the entire world. Having a single monolithic company that does everything to do with CRM doesn't really work because all that company could do is specialize in CRM as a thing, which isn't valuable and nobody cares about. Instead, what is unique about this opportunity compared to a lot of other things in Drupal is that the CRM stuff is the boring bit that nobody cares about. It's these things here, these focusing on your niche and solving those particular client things that only you can know if you have very close interaction with a particular client. That is the stuff that they'll pay for. But to enable all of this, the base package has to be good. It's, a, it's pointless if you try and do all of this stuff, but you spend ages faffing around on an irritating migration, or ages trying to install it, or spend ages trying to get the theme right, or just things that should just work. Um, and this is my view, uh, just a very quick brainstorm, on the potential markets for CRM. What you can see here is a mixture of markets, of industries, and different systems. Um, and this is why CRM doesn't really work, because I've seen many proprietary soft pieces of software out there that say they're a membership system, and that's what they focus on. Um, but the reality is a membership system for us when you have, in Drupal, you have good context management. If you have organic groups and you have commerce subscriptions, you have a membership system. We can take the basics of what Drupal is and turn it into all of these things that are sold as big, expensive, proprietary systems that just solve that one problem on its own. And we can make it so that our system not only will solve membership as good and as specific as that, but we can customize it so it fits exactly that client's needs, so it's not even a generic membership system. Because of our core contrib and all the ways that Drupal 8 especially builds on top of each other, we can really make it so that we have a very nice base system that we maintain, but these customizations, the expensive ones, the complicated ones, but the valuable ones, are, are they work on top of those things and are much easier to maintain. Public directories. Again, I've seen websites that do nothing but sell, we can do public directories for you. But a public directory is just a view at the end of the day. It's just a view, it's just a view with Sola. It's a very simple thing that when we have a good contact management system in Drupal Core, a public directory just spits out easily. And there's been quite a few times where we've had our clients who have had a couple of public directories and they've suddenly got funding from the government to make a new directory to solve a particular situation. And now funding will be in the order of 20 to 30k. And we're like, it will take us a day to spin up a new thing, because it's just a view. We've already built everything. We just add a couple new fields, and we just make a new, new view, and the view has a bunch of facets that are slightly new. It's a day's worth of work. And so they've already got that funding, because of the weird way that governments work. And it's meant that they've sometimes been able to just throw money at improving everything. And at the end of it, they can go to the person who's done their funding and say, hey, look, we've solved this particular problem for you much better than you were expecting, and it's been on time, and it's been on budget. Hasn't that been great? Um, our, we have a booking system. That's the thing that we focus a lot of our time in. And we're on roughly 200k contacts and 30k new bookings per year. Um, 
there's a tremendous amount of work that has gone into the booking system. Um, and there's a lot more complications with the booking system compared to just CRMs in general. Publication systems, we've got people who um, they sell um, a membership and then you get access to publications. Um, and they're, you know, we're talking very complicated, very expensive market research stuff. So people will be spending tens of thousands of pounds to sign up for this thing. And then they get access to a bunch of PDFs they can download. And again, it's just a view. It's a view that um, now will link permissions to stuff in the CRM system. And so this is now a connection point between the CRM and Drupal, except because it's all Drupal, this is no longer any kind of horrible syncing business. It's just we have permissions that when you log in, if you have an active membership, then you can download that thing. Um, I think I, we, haven't man we didn't manage to succeed in this one, but I think there's a lot of scope for small financial institutes. In, um, I, I know someone who they, 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 they do sort of um, their fund, and you need, I think you need like two million before you can invest in this fund. So they're relatively large, but smaller than the big investment banks. And they just wanted a CRM system that shows all the people who invested in different funds, but wanted those people to be able to log in and see a report of how their money is going, how things are going with the funds that they have. Again, this is something that I think if somebody were able to crack this market, if somebody were able to get a single mini bank and provided a Drupal financial institute distribution, you would find there are a ton of different organizations that basically do exactly the same thing, that are all full of, they, they all spend quite a lot on this stuff because they make a lot of money, and if this, can, this problem can just go away for them, they'll be happy to do that. And if you are the people that specialize in this world, people will go to you because they'll know each other. Um, small academic institutes, uh, I've got a friend who works at this university, and he is a, uh, he's a student um, uh, activities officer and has to deal with all the different uh, societies across the university and all the things that they do. Um, and there's about, two, there's about two different proprietary activities management solutions that exist out there um, that are, there's quite a lot of money behind them and they try and sell them. You, you, if you could just make a Drupal distribution of this, it wouldn't take that much effort compared to on top of the base platform. But if you can get into that market, every single university might go for you because you're likely to be able to make it so that a Drupal-based one is significantly better than the others and significantly cheaper because you're just building a small customizations on top, not the base package. Church management is what we're interested in, and that's where we started. Again, it's such a niche, it's such a specific group of people, it's such a different way of working, that if we, our company, spends our entire time working on church management, we could collaborate with any number of other organizations. And there would be never any point where we're stepping on each other's toes, where we're competing with each other, where we're sort of having little fights about whether or not we should have the contribute contrib 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 rights or someone else should, because then we'll get more clients from it. Because it's just a completely different market. Our fight will be against all the proprietary church management systems that exist out there. And then commerce, back office, newsletter management, then customer support and sales. We haven't, we've only begun to get a little bit into sales and, and customer support. But as you can imagine, if you could build a good customer support system, or you could build a good sales force equivalent where you're managing leads, etc., then again, this is something further that you can build on top of CRM, where you can specialize in the sales of we work, um, Rob works with uh, a, couple, a, a legal firm, but you can imagine we're going to be like, we're the people that specialize in sales uh, for legal organizations. Is this all sort of making sense? Is the, the point I'm trying to suggest hitting home a little bit? Now, I'm kind of intrigued. When I have this list up here, do you feel like you can instantly think of other industries that could build be built on top of a good Drupal-based context management system um, that I haven't really thought of. Like, does anyone would, would want to shout some charities? Charities. But, I mean, there's different types of charities within that. Yeah. They've got very different needs, like fundraising, and like, um, membership management. Sort of right, so that's perfect. Where, like, whereas all of the charities we work with have focused on membership management, there are lots of charities that focus on fundraising. And you can imagine that actually the system that is built for Fundraising and management, they're quite different in their needs and quite different in their data structure and quite different in the external interactions that you'll need to do. Membership management, they need to be able to log in and manage their membership. Fundraising, they might need to do cool things to do with um, sharing those fundraising things on Facebook, etc. So I think that would be another example where somebody else can come along that isn't us and say, you know, we know a couple of clients that are really good at fundraising. Let's build a really good fundraising 
set of things on top of it, and we're going to corner that area of the market. Uh, is so it? Donations management apparently is a huge issue. Right. Again, similar to the membership thing, but subtly different with donations, uh, because the way the reporting is going to work is going to be different in donations. You're going to be focusing on who's donating, why, what things you do when some people donate, whereas with membership stuff, you're dealing with more constant contact with a particular client. So, yeah, so in a charity world, there's a couple of ideas. Is there any other ideas? Yeah, that could make sense. Right, so even in the university world, there's so many different things that could be your niche. Um, Sorry, it's not about the market so much, but it's about um, cities that are in. Yeah. 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 I will get to that. <laughs> cool, so I'll move on. So I just thought I'd show you a couple of uh, slides of here's a directory that we built. Like, again, for any of you who are Drupal developers, you can see that building something like this is going to, you can do it in your eyes closed, it's just a view with a bunch of facets. But what is cool about this is that all of this data is 100% up to date because it is just another view of the data in the CRM system. The CRM system is, at, the, at its core, just a view. It's just entities, it's just fields. There's no synchronization stuff. This second charge project name is a name field, and what I'm seeing here is the same thing in the CRM system. So, and also we've got, um, where it says register my organization, if you're logged in, you would see an edit button, and you can edit it, and it will change everywhere. And then we've also built little tools to make it so that whenever there's any change, a clink staff has to go around and verify it, uh, just to make sure that nothing bad has been put in. But that basically never, ever happens. And so whilst this is very simple from a Drupal point of view, it's incredibly powerful from the amount of value it provides the client relative to what they've been used to before they saw this. Here's a booking system. Um, again, um, one of the biggest advantages, I think, of this is that we've, everything's just so flexible to customize how it looks. Um, and then finally, here's publications. Again, you could, it's just a view of things. It's just a view of things, and that's what we do in Drupal. We just make views of things over and over again. And this view of a thing is worth huge amounts to someone. <laughs> so I think I've been trying to push this point quite a lot. Serum itself isn't valuable. It's when it becomes a business application that it becomes valuable. It's when it's used to solve an actual business problem where there's something that somebody's dealing with and we're making a difference. That's where things matter. I think all business applications need some form of effective contact management, and in my mind, really Drupal 8 should do this out of the box. Um, there's a couple of little technical things that we've done in this decoupled auth module. In theory, I don't see why any of this could be in core. We have tried to get it in core. Some people were interested in it, but as you can imagine, with core development, um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a lot of politics, it's a lot of effort, uh, so it hasn't happened yet. But there isn't any real ideological reason or any thing why a basic why, why the user entity itself couldn't form the basis of a effective contact management. Um, so like, I think and you must have seen this image so many times before. This is one thing everyone says about Drupal, and this is where I'm going to start going into your question about CV CRM, is that everyone complains, and less so now, but they go on and on about how Drupal is incredibly hard to use, it's a high learning curve, and WordPress, ModX, Joomla are so much easier to use. Now, the thing that's quite cool, and again, I think it shows this thing where business applications are so much more valuable, is this is true with websites, but it's completely not true when it comes to business applications. Views, you might think of as quite complicated compared to anything you see in WordPress, but it, it pales in comparison to the horrible nightmare it is for anyone who's ever had to administrate SharePoint. Is there any SharePoint people out there? Right. Do you, I mean, do you enjoy that side? Right, again, right. So, like, so like, if you are someone who's come into SharePoint and you've got the SharePoint designer and you've got the SharePoint web parts and you've got this horrible mess of different ways of doing things that we in the Drupal community have got really, really good at, actually, Drupal is easy to use. Um, we, sh we once got someone using our CRM system and I built a little blog post and I spent half an hour showing someone how to use views. Um, we did have to set up all the relationships a little bit. So we had to make them a demo view, which they then cloned. But once they could clone that, they had their report builder just out of the box, and it was easy. And we have had to do no work to make that report builder. But we've competed with 
hundreds and hundreds of proprietary uh, content man uh, uh, CRM systems out there, that every single one of those proprietary solutions have to make their own version of a report builder. And because they're trying to do something very complicated without very much input, they're all pretty horrible, even to the point of Microsoft with SharePoint, because I mean, I loved it when I got into SharePoint. I thought it was so cool what it promised it could do. But it does so much stuff, it's so hard to use. And that problem is something that we in the Drupal community have got really good at. So actually what I find is that when you show someone a native Drupal CRM solution, you show someone the fields UI, you show someone views, you show someone the panels in place editor, they have power again to control their data, to control their database. And we've had sometimes really happy emails coming from clients telling us how they had a consultant come in and they needed to do, add in a little um, questionnaire for a bunch of people and they said, right, we need to pull out SurveyMonkey, we need to pull out Excel, we need to put out loads of pieces of paper, we're going to build this new database thing for dealing with this one project, and then we're going to export your data from here so we can add some, and we're going to import it back again, and had all of this stuff. And then the person was like, no, look, just, just don't worry about all that stuff. We'll go here, add a bunch of fields. We'll go here, create a form. Oh, look, we've got a view, and it can export into Excel. And they were super excited, because Drupal is easy. This is not true in the world of business applications. Um, and the reality is, I think there's a sense in which, actually, we all know this. If you want a nice-looking website, and it's just a pretty-looking thing, go to WordPress. Drupal is not really the place you go to, to just build a website. The heart of what makes Drupal cooler, anyway, was business applications. It's when we're doing things like making the editing process better. It's when we're doing things like making the content more intelligent. So we already know this in the Drupal community, that what we do is more than just build websites. But when we are in that industry where people are looking at SharePoint, Dynamics, and Salesforce, it becomes much clearer. It solved many of the hard problems already. I'm going to show you another list with just loads of modules. But search API fills, panels, and all layouts. Um, and what I was just telling in my story, these are the three things. And this now becomes my answer to the question about Siri CRM. What I would say is Siri CRM is pretty great. But they call themselves a constituent management system rather than a CRM because, again, they've tried to go for a particular niche because CRM stuff is so different. And, and using CV CRM in a non-profit non environment is obviously possible, but you're probably more likely to go with something like Sugar or one of the other alternatives. Um, because, actually, a, CRM, a generic CRM system is never useful for anyone, so they all have to try and specialize. And what I would say is from what I've seen of CVCRM, I haven't followed it in the last couple of years, but what I've seen of CVCRM is it's had a trajectory where it's tried to move to become more and more like Drupal. It's tried to make it much more modular, tried to make it much more easily to customize, it's tried to do report building and fields and things like that. I think Drupal can get to a point where it can do everything CVCRM can do faster than something like CVCRM could become like Drupal because we've put so much effort into making modules work. We're now with Drupal 8, we've put so much effort into working well with Symfony and all those things, etc., etc. Um, it has very simple tools to customize everything. Uh, again, uh, this is based around when I worked with things, uh, others. I haven't worked with any other systems for the last two or three years, but what I found in a lot of other systems is um, simple tools to heavily customize everything it's just not there really well. Like, what we've got in the world of panels, what we've got in the world of display suite, what we've got in the world of the new Drupal 8 versions of those things, what we've got with views and what we've got fields, um, we're making it to panelize the way things look, to, to customize the way things look. But actually, um, five minutes, ten minutes. But actually, our CRM systems are um, the, 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 the basic dashboard, we just use those same tools. So when we need to customize them to a particular client, we've got all of those fantastic tools that we're all used to in the Drupal community that we can use to customize our tool, our, our, our workflows, our UIs, to exactly meet those things very quickly. Flexibility, I think with, particularly with some things to do with distributions, we can make it so that our base package can turn into one of these specialized things really easily, where those small customizations at the top that you have to watch and maintain will be a bit more expensive, but everything else, because we're all on the same package, will be the same. Um, and then very simple and powerful integration with the front end, because there's no integration with the front end, it's all one Drupal site. And I think this is the thing that is the main thing right now, that if you ever have a client where they have a CRM system and they need heavy integration with their front end, there are lots of times when it will cost more to integrate your Drupal website with a CRM system than it would be to just scrap their sister system, build a completely new one from scratch, and migrate everything in. And we have found that 
because it's so simple to integrate with the front end. It's just a view of, you know. Um, and then finally, why Drupal? I think a lot of you will have clients that have a CRM component already. You'll have a lot of tenders out there that have a CRM component already. If you could change your thinking a little bit from Drupal is for websites to Drupal can do more than that, I think you'll find there's already a treasure trove of potential work clients of what I think is actually more fun and interesting work in some way, just already out there, where you can come along and say, hey, you want this integration. What if I just did it all in Drupal? Huh. That's one thing of why Drupal. Now, I'm going to rush through this. This is um, Drupal is basically CRM. Um, the, this is a bunch of all of the modules that are incredibly useful to do Drupal with CRM. Um, this is my view of why native Drupal CRM hasn't really taken off yet. There's a few people who have tried to do it. Um, the heart, and we can talk about this more in the buff, is what I'm calling this thing of a useless user. We need to make it so that the, the user entity, the contact, the base thing you store your data on, has the ability to be linked to an authentication account, but sometimes not. We need the ability for a staff member to add a new contact in, somebody register on the site later, and take control of their data. We call this process acquisitions. Um, you know, one example in our booking system is, I, if I, as a booking manager, I can book on 50 people to come to this event. A couple of them are volunteering to be on team. They get a free ticket, but they have to fill in a, a team application form. So with our system, that creates a bunch of, in, in Drupal 7, they're all called parties, so basically a bunch of contacts, and then um, that person gets an email. When they log in and register on the site, they take over all of their data, they can register for a new, uh, fill out all those forms, and it's all kind of there. So we need this thing where you can have a useless user that then gets a authentication later. With Drupal out of the box, the user entity, it needs an email, it needs a password, it needs a username, really. Um, so we've had to, and then it also isn't really built perfectly to manage the difference between the people who are useless users and true users. So we have built, um, yeah, this is a thing, users got authentication in it. Um, we need something to split them and then bring those back, back together. And that's our decoupled auth module now. It was our party module before. Okay, very quickly, where we're up to. We, we have a very good, I think, Drupal 7 version that works quite well. For a very small amount of money, you can build them an out-of-the-box working CRM system on Drupal 7. It's a bit big. It's a bit messy. The documentation is pretty terrible. It's a bit of a nightmare. We've had a few developers look at it with panic attacks. It's very, very scary to get into. And whilst I think it works really well, there's a lot of work that can be done to make it a lot easier for people to get into. Barrier to entry is quite high. Um, so the D8 version, we want to try and get that one up to scratch. Um, also the business models. Um, the reality is it's really hard to find the money and time to sit around helping issue queues, writing documentations that aren't directly for clients. And so we've got a couple of ideas, which we can talk about later, of particular business models that means that we can justify spending the time funding all this. Okay. Here's a picture of, uh, that's me up there, Mr. James Abrahams. Um, uh, there's, in fact, it's all me, Captain Test Game Game Hands. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a real client. I think it's 2,619 of me. Um, here is me again, and my individual thing. Um, again, this is something that we can do a lot with the UI to make it a lot better. So, call to arms, what can happen? We're looking for people to join us. Uh, I'm particularly interested in anyone who wants to actually make money from this. Um, we have found when we're working with people that are doing it as hobbies, it does work, but because we're working with real clients, we have to move incredibly fast. If there's any people out there who are th who's thinking they've got clients in mind that they could start working on this stuff with, that would be a really cool way to do some collaboration. We want to collaborate on the software, documentation, marketing, and business models. So, I rushed through the end. We've got four minutes or something left. Are there any questions? Have you um, talked to the people in the CBCRM community about possible collaboration? A little bit. Uh, I think what I'm kind of interested in is getting our base thing working quite well because what I've found is trying to tell people who are already into CRM how our stuff works, given that a lot of it isn't perfect and it's quite messy, it's quite a lot of effort. Um, I have seen times when the Civil CRM community in the past have thought of building everything on top of Drupal. In, when, before Drupal 7, they were thinking at one point of actually just doing this and doing everything on Drupal 7. And they chose, I think, wisely not to at that time uh, I think if we get our Drupal 8 version working well, that would be a really good time to approach them for you know, a couple of years in the future. Yeah. Any more questions?
Um, oh, yeah. Where can we get it? Or where can we see where you've got to? Uh, oh, I should have put a link to that. So there, there's a um, project called OpenCRM. So that's one of them on Drupal.org. There's another one called Contacts with an S. Contacts is a Drupal 8 one. Uh, OpenCRM is the 7. Does anyone, I, just for some basic feedback, does everyone, anyone got any clients in mind? Now, have you found in the last year or so that you have many clients that have talked about a CRM component of their work but you've had to back away from it at all? I have a particular story that I'm involved in an organization, in a project in an organization, and then you did a volunteer database and a right. uh, mailing list database, and then an inventory database, and there was a guy trying to build it with an application. And in, in the three hours that we did Drupal, so now we got uh, right. a database. Uh, and the guy who I didn't know anything about CRM until a couple of weeks ago. Right. And then I heard that they were people implemented CRM. Uh, and so one of the reasons I was at the, you know, this lesson was because I wanted to learn more about CRM. Uh, and, uh, and so we will need to build uh, a because the, the idea was to build an integrated uh, system, mm. and so what you're saying is actually Drupal can do, can do everything. Is it 7 or 8? Uh, I, I built it with Drupal 7 because I need cool. to do it quick, and Drupal yeah. 8 was having problems here and there, and I said, okay, I'll just do it. And, uh, and, but, and the other thing I was uh, uh, asking, also communication would be another thing. In, uh, can something like this also have to do communication between people, and, you know? Because you have a kind of internet, but can yeah. it be also this includes also the internet? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think that's a definite scope forward. I think if you look at Salesforce, one of the things it's really put a lot of effort in is communication within things. Obviously, we have notes on contacts, so there's small things we do to provide that. But I think if this were to take off, you could do that communication stuff really well yeah. with Drupal and organic groups, etc. Et so you think that all this can be done basically by Yes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I would say we've got almost the basic feature parity. I would say we've almost got it with CVCRM, and we've migrated people off of Sugar CRM before. So those systems that exist out there, we've got roughly the same features. Ours are slightly less, but mostly on, on the things that don't matter as much. Yeah. Cool. Do we have to end now then? Yeah. Cool. Well, um, anyone else interested for, to hear more, especially the more technical stuff? The BOF is uh, in 45 minutes, I think it is. Um, thank you.